Old Faithful. The handle stayed shut up for several days, but one market day, Peter Sam could not work. He needed repairs. Sir Handel was glad to come out. He tried to be kind, but the coaches didn't trust him. They were awkward and rude. He even sang them little songs, but it was no use. It was most unfortunate, too, that Sir Handel had to check suddenly to avoid running over a sheep. He's bumped us! screamed the coaches. Let's pay him out! The coaches knew that all engines must go carefully at a place near the big station. But they were so cross with Sir Handel that they didn't care what they did. They surged into Sir Handel, making him lurch off the line. Luckily, no one was hurt. Sir Handel limped to the shed. The thin controller inspected the damage. No more work for you today, he said. Bother those coaches. We must take the village people home and fetch the tourists. All without an engine. What about me, sir? said a voice. Scarlowey, he exclaimed. Can you do it? I'll try, answered the old engine. The coaches stood at the platform. Scarlowey advanced on them, hissing crossly. I'm ashamed of you, he scolded. Such behaviour. You might have hurt your passengers. On market day, too. We're sorry, Scarlowey. We, we didn't think. It's That's a handle. He's no tails, said Scarlowey firmly. I won't have it. And don't you dare try tricks on me. No, Scarlowey. Oh, of course not, Scarlowey, quavered the coaches meekly. Scarlowey might be old and have dirty paint, but he was certainly an engine who would stand no nonsense. His friends crowded round, and the guard had to shoo them away before they could start. Scar Lowy felt happy. He remembered all the gates and stiles where he had to stop, and whistled to his friends. The sun shone, the rails were dry. This is lovely, he thought. But presently, they began to climb and he felt short of steam. Oh, bother my tubes, he panted. Take your time, old boy, soothed his driver. I'll manage. I'll manage. He wheezed, and pausing for breath at the stations, he gallantly struggled along. After a rest at the top station, Scarlowey was ready to start. It'll be better downhill, he thought. The coaches ran nicely, but he soon began to feel tired again. His springs were weak, and the rail joints jarred his wheels. Then, with a crack, a front spring broke, and he stopped. I feel all crooked, he complained. That's torn it, said his driver. We'll need a bus now for our passengers. No, pleaded Scarlowey. I'd be ashamed to have a bus take my passengers. I'll get home or burst, he promised bravely. The thin controller looked at his watch and paced the platform. James and his train waited impatiently too. They heard a horse peep, peep. Then groaning, clanging and clanking, Scar Lowy crept into sight. He was tilted to one side and making fearful noises, but he plodded bravely on. I'll it. <sighs> I'll do it. <sighs> he gasped between the clanks and groans. I'll. I've done it. <sighs> and he sighed thankfully as the train stopped where James was waiting. James said nothing. He waited for his passengers and then respectfully puffed away. You were right, sir, said Scarlowey to the owner that evening. Old engines can't pull trains like young ones. The owner smiled. They can if they're mended, old faithful, he said. 
And that's what will happen to you. You deserve it. Oh, sir, said Scarlowe happily. Sir Handel is longing for Scarlowe to come back. He thinks Scarlowe is the best engine in the world. He does his fair share of the work now, and the coaches never play tricks on him, because he always manages them in Scarlowe's way. <laughs>